In the midst of severe destructions caused by the violent insurgent group, notoriously called Boko Haram, Borno State looks determined in its work towards speedy recovery and sustainable growth. Although the Boko Haram became famous in 2009, deadly attacks by the insurgents reached peak between 2012 and 2014. It was in these years that the group killed thousands of innocent citizens during serial attacks and eventual occupation of 20 out of the 27 local government areas in Borno State. The insurgents also abducted women and children, many of whom they turned into child soldiers and suicide bombers. Women under custody were raped, while husbands and male parents were mostly killed. Attacks by the insurgents created 54,000 widows and 52,000 male and female orphans, who are mostly unaccompanied after losing parents and relatives to series of attacks. More than 2 million citizens fled to Meduguri after insurgents attacked and took sovereign administrative control in substantial portions of Abadam, Bama, Goza, Marte, Mobar, Monguno, Guzamala, Damboa, Kalabalgi, Ngala, Dikwa, Kukawa, Konduga, Nganzai, and five other local government areas. With the occupation, two million citizens who escaped violent scenes between 2013 and 2014 arrived in Meduguri in batches. However, the impact of their tragic displacement was mitigated by different housing projects being carried out by the Borno State Government. The Kashim Shetima administration had from 2012 begun the construction of 2,500 houses and apartments in seven locations in Middle. The sites for these estates include Zanna Mustafa Gardens, which has apartments located on the airport road, the teacher's estate site along Pompomari, a resettlement estate on Baga Road, another estate site along Dambuhabiu Road, another site along Bama Road, and two more sites on Gubio Road and along Mafadikwa Road. Although these estates were stalled due to influx of displaced persons, they nevertheless provided temporary shelters in the last five to six years. In the words of Governor Kashim Shetima, providing relief to traumatized internally displaced persons was more important to him. As such, even though some occupants were vandalizing installations, forcing internally displaced persons out of government housing sites was not under consideration. Prior to the establishment of the ministry, uh, when the destructions began, 2013-2014, you know, uh, from time to time, and whenever the communities were destroyed, His Excellency directs and uh, the reconstructions were done. Uh, however, when he established this ministry, the mandate was fully given to the ministry. And uh, we have so far fared very well. I may recall that more than 20 local governments were overrun by the insurgents. And uh, uh, this is to say that most, almost all these local governments were destroyed. More than 20 local governments were destroyed. Uh, uh, a lot, so many lives were lost. In the, the destructions uh, particularly targeted schools, health facilities, municipal buildings, everything that has to do with government. And uh, uh, in a nutshell, including even ordinary residential houses. The people of Borno were soon to heave a sigh of relief when between 2015 and 2016, the Nigerian Armed Forces, under a new Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammad Buhari, fought the insurgents to a standstill and succeeded in liberating all the 20 local government areas hitherto occupied by the insurgents. This new era of hope gave room for stock-taking of damages and the way forward. The World Bank, in collaboration with the European Union, the Nigerian Presidency and Government, in the six northeastern states made up of Adamawa, Bauchi, Borno, Gombe, Taraba and Yubi, undertook a formal evaluation 
using ground and satellite assessment of infrastructure, among other techniques. In a recovery and peace building assessment report, co-authored by all the parties, the Boko Haram was discovered to have caused damages worth 9 billion US dollars across the Northeast. Of that figure, Borno State, which was worst affected, accounted for destructions worth about $6 billion. A breakdown of the report on Borno State indicates in specifics that a total of 956,453 private houses, representing 30% of the total number of houses in the state, were destroyed by the Boko Haram insurgents across more than 20 local government areas. Apart from private houses, a total of 665 municipal buildings comprising ministries, local government secretariat buildings, prisons, police stations, and electric offices were all destroyed by the insurgents. A total of 5,335 classrooms and other school buildings were destroyed in 512 primary schools, 38 secondary schools, and two tertiary institutions in the state. Also destroyed by the insurgents were 201 health centers, mostly primary health care clinics, dispensaries, and some general hospitals. The insurgents also destroyed 726 power substations and distribution lines, just like they destroyed 1,630 water sources, including motorized boreholes, hand pumps, solar-powered boreholes, and facilities for piped water schemes in Borno State. In addition, they bombed parks, gardens, orchards, game reserves, green wall projects, and poisoned the ponds, rivers, and lakes across 16 local government areas, in addition to stealing over 500,000 cattle. All these, the RPBA report captured, were in addition to setting ablaze markets, large-scale farms, and hundreds of trucks that evacuated farm produce from various parts of Borno State for internal export to neighboring countries. Rather than being discouraged by the frightening statistics being generated before and after the RPBA evaluation, Governor Kashim Shetima decided to take the bull by the horns with his bold declaration to flag off the ambitious rebuilding of communities. The governor's decision was at a time Borno had a collapse in internally generated revenue due to insurgent attacks on economic activities, including transport. It was also a time when the state was receiving far less monthly allocations from the Federation account due to a fall in oil revenue. To Governor Shetima, however, it was necessary for his administration to begin the reconstruction of communities destroyed by the Boko Haram. Matching his words with proven action, Governor Shetima, in October 2015, accelerated the use of Kaga local government in northern Borno for his experiment. The Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, earlier created by the Governor in September 2015, was given the mandate to execute the state government's ambitious rebuilding program. Within weeks of constant deployment of resources and repeated supervisory visits by Governor Shetima, about 432 houses were successfully built in Meitankuriri, Tamsukau, and Maino villages of Kaga and Son in Aono, a village in Konduga local government area which borders Kaga. Aside private homes, municipal buildings like police stations and staff quarters, courts, local government secretariats and palaces of district heads were all rebuilt in the pilot phase. The overwhelming successes recorded in Kaga's pilot reconstruction, which was encouraging so much that the governor later in March 2017 invited Ajoji Bola Ahmed Tinubu to commission the 432 houses among series of other community projects in parts of Kaga, Konduga, and Meiduguri. Meanwhile, the World Bank's Recovery and Peace Building Assessment Report had identified Bama local government area as was attacked by the Boko Haram in terms of the number of displacement and the proportion of houses and other facilities destroyed during administrative occupations by the insurgents. The RPBA report had listed Mobar as next to Bama in extent of destruction. With the RPBA report in focus, it became Governor Shetima's conviction 
that confronting Bama being the biggest would create momentum for the government and lessen the awful humanitarian situation. In the event, hundreds of thousands of Bama residents occupying IDP camps are able to voluntarily return to their safe and rebuilt homes in Bama. On the 21st of September 2016, Governor Kashim Shichima temporarily relocated his office to Bama Town in Bama local government area. While living in Bama, the governor recruited hundreds of civilian JTF fighters and hunters, facilitated fresh deployment of resident policemen, and mobilized government agencies to begin the sanitation and reconstruction of houses, hospitals, schools, police formations in the local government area. The move by Governor Shetima, which significantly raised public confidence, was widely celebrated by citizens of Borno, the Nigerian presidency, the military, and other stakeholders. Move, move, move. How old are you, sir? I'm sitting here and I'm never to you. I'm sitting here and I'm never to The governor ensured that before departing Burma, after nearly 10 days on the ground, the once highly populated Bama town was being transformed from its ghost state on the governor's arrival to a one cleaned up in the promising path to sufficient restoration. Governor Shetima consistently approved and released funds to the state's Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, then under Professor Babagana Umar Azulum as commissioner. Zulum, who is currently APC's governorship candidate in Borno State, lived in Bama for weeks and months, directly supervising rebuilding works. Borno State government at some point solicited and obtained support from the PCNI and the Dangote Foundation in some aspects of the reconstruction works, even though the most part of funding came from the state government as steadily approved by Governor Shetima. The governor's determination paid off in Bama. A total of 11,000 private houses were reconstructed in Bama town alone. The houses were rebuilt alongside with schools, hospitals, water installations, and other public facilities. Aside Bama, Governor Shetima also approved and released funds for rebuilding of houses in other local government areas. The rest assured that we are determined to change the face of Borno. Apart from Bama, I'm going to Goza, I'm going to Lhasa, Chibok and of course Askira Uba. We know all communities were devastated, but the scale of destruction varies from one community to the other. But we are going to touch the lives of each and every son of Borno and we are going to rebuild our state brick by brick. Verifiable records from the Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement indicate in Mobar local government area. 7,000 residential houses and other public facilities were built. In Konduga local government area, 2,000 houses were reconstructed in addition to an ongoing 500 housing estate. In Dambua local government area, 2,500 houses were rebuilt in addition to eight public buildings and offices, which include the Dambua town shopping complex and local government secretariat. In Goza, over 2,000 residential houses were rebuilt in Goza town, and in Goshe town, also in Goza, 500 housing projects were undertaken, besides rebuilding of other public buildings in different parts of Goza, which include Pulka, Goza town, and Goshe. In Ganzai, 1,000 houses were rebuilt. In Gala, Gambaru town was rebuilt, and in Kalabalgi, 500 housing projects was undertaken while in Mafa local government area, 3,000 houses were rebuilt. In Dikwa, 45 key public institutions were rebuilt, with the funding coming from the Victims Support Fund, while the Borno State Government carried out supervision. In Chibok, the State Government facilitated and supervised the building of 50 houses through an intervention 
by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. In Azkira Oba local government area, the government rebuilt and remodeled palaces of traditional rulers to restore civil authority. This was in addition to rebuilding other key public facilities. In Biu, Jere and the Meduguri Metropolitan Council, the government undertook different reconstruction works, mostly focusing on municipal buildings and public establishments. In Meduguri, the state government has acquired property like the old CBN quarters, which is being overhauled for conversion to homes, which will be allocated to some of the 54,000 women who lost husbands to Boko Haram. The women to be allotted these houses will be engaged as foster mothers for 52,000 children whose parents were killed by Boko Haram. Although the children will be enrolled in boarding schools already being completed, the foster mothers will be required to provide emotional support to children in ways that the mostly unaccompanied orphans do not grow without feeling the love of mothers. All the assets that we are building, allocation of houses in those estates will be tied to adoption of orphans. People that are responsible enough to adopt orphans will be given accommodation, pre-accommodation in those estates. And probably they might own up even owning those houses. We have no objection whatsoever. But it's a starting point to see how far we can go. All those people that are willing to adopt at least five orphans cater for them. Those with limited means will certainly support them in our own limited way. So these are some of the things that are really agitating our mind. They can see as their own mothers. With the significant progress recorded, the Borno state government was able to facilitate the voluntary and dignified return of displaced persons to 14 local government. Our administration was somehow able to build more than 30,000 houses in new assets resettlement communities and rebuilding of homes destroyed by Boko Haram. And we did this by being bold and efficient in the utilization of public resources. We have had to, at a point in time, redirect almost the entire machinery of government towards redressing the destructive impact of the insurgency by embarking on a massive program of reconstruction and rehabilitation of destroyed infrastructural facilities. Government has been able to complete the reconstruction and rehabilitation of crit critical infrastructure like schools, hospitals, boreholes, and power substations in different communities destroyed by Boko Haram. As a result of these efforts, displaced persons from 14 local government areas have already returned to safe and rebuild areas. We are determined to ensure that all remaining IDPs are reintegrated in their respective communities as soon as it is practicable. In our resettlement programs, we'll always maintain that there is no compulsion and return will only be to save and rebuild communities.